by the virtue of being born a woman and black, you can't run away from the politics of those two things. So you're already double disenfranchised from the get-go. Um, I don't think uh, advocacy or being an activist is something you choose. It's something that um, you have no choice but to become. In Bogoto, Sara Chitambo is a woman of many hats. Using her platform in art, fashion and technology to amplify the voices of marginalized groups, her work seeks to bring visibility to African narratives that are often overlooked. Women and the youth are at the center of her work. I call myself a creative um, entrepreneur. I consider myself a person just who's here to explore as many of my talents as I possibly can. I love learning, I'm very curious, and I'm very interested in technology and um, anything to do with taking us forward as a human race, as Africans, as women. I made a documentary in uh, the Vemba district in Venda, and we were doing a, a, a film about sexual reproductive rights of rural women. And I was just so inspired by the way in which they took so much pride in doing condom demonstrations in their, in their church meetings, how they were distributing female condoms in the choir, you know, so doing all these things very clandestinely, very underground without the men really catching wind of it, but really taking the power in terms of if he's not going to use a condom, I'm going to find my own way to. We'll find Uri Sam, they know Uri. They have to sit down with their wives to talk about their family together. But some families, you'll find that men is the one who have to decide, Uri, I want the baby. Sara's films have scooped awards at the Climate Change Summit in Cancun, Mexico in 2010 and the Royal Commonwealth Society UK Vision Awards that same year. As the spokesperson of Sisters Working in Film and Television, an organization that empowers women working in the industry, Sara says there is still a need to portray women in more diverse ways and to create opportunities for women as industry leaders, but most importantly, for women to feel safe. In her experience, the film and television industry has not been a safe space for women, mirroring the reality of South African society. Sara recalls her own experience of gender-based violence on set. The sound guy came up to me, you know, and you know, I didn't know if he wanted to hug me goodbye or whatever, but he literally held onto me and rubbed my back you know, uh, and I had to push him away, you know, but I think he felt that because it's the last day, he can actually now try something and I'm not gonna have to see him tomorrow, I can't report him or whatever. So that is a moment where I felt taken advantage of or um, undermined. And it is, it can be, a, it's very humiliating. It's very, uh, you feel like you want to scream or you want to, am I overreacting? But you're like, that was really inappropriate. You know, uh, so that's one moment I can think of, but there, there are plenty. I think what the government needs to do is really take um, into consideration women's pleas that have been coming. We had the total shutdown in 2018 where women marched to the union buildings. Three months later, the, the president held a, a gender-based violence summit where women presented 24 demands. Please give us funding to be able to get shelters for women who are abused. Please give us funding to be able to create a campaign that runs the whole year, not just during 16 days of activism. Please give us funding to um, rehabilitate per perpetrators. So it is very clear in terms of what women want and what women need in terms of feeling safer in South Africa. But the government speaks but doesn't put money behind it. These things need resources. I think Women's Day should be every day. <laughs> Women really um, have suffered and have given of themselves. I think we're still not equal. So there's still equality to be fought for. Celebrating those who came before us, but also, you know, uh, springboarding of the foundations of set for us to go forward to make real change. And we can't do that just as women alone. We need men to come along uh, with us. We need men to also realize that they have an advantage that they can use for the greater good. I don't get tired of 
amplifying voices of people who need visibility. I don't get tired of amplifying and putting a spotlight on issues that should uh, be in the spotlight. And I don't find it a burden at all. I find it as um, my life's work, really. It's an extension of who I am.